Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar about the HIC BRM and the, the most recent updates and how to prepare for the HIC BRM verification. My name is Karin Ekberg, and I'm the CEO and founder of Leadership and Sustainability. I have a very long experience in the sustainability area, and Leadership and Sustainability itself is now nearly nine years old. We work as consultants and as verifiers for HIC BRM, FEM, and FSLM, and many other programs as well. And with that, I would already like to hand over to Stephanie, who will introduce herself and to take it away from here. Thank you, Karen, and welcome, everybody. I am Stephanie Rida Haas. I've joined the team of uh, Leadership and Sustainability as Sustainability Director on 1st of April this year. I have almost 15 years of experience in the outdoor industry, having worked before for the German outdoor brand Ortovox as head of CSR and chief supply chain officer. And I'm very much looking forward now to my new role to support our clients and maybe also you as a company on your sustainability path. Before we get started, a few tips um, on using Zoom during this webinar. You will be muted during the call. If you already have questions during our presentation, please simply write them in the Q&A section. You can see that on the screen here. We will answer via chat or at the end during the Q&A session. Please do not use the chat. Um, just simply enter your questions and press send um, at the Q&A section. After the webinar, you will also receive the presentation and the recording. And here you see a short overview over today's agenda. You have already met Karen and me, and after our webinar, you will have a better overview over all HIC tools and their benefits. You will know about the adaptations of the BRM and why they will help you and your organization in the future. You will know how to best prepare for the HIC BRM verification. And you will also get to know about the services that we at Leadership and Sustainability offer regarding the BRM verification, but also other sustainability topics. Before we start with a general introduction to the BRM, I would love, like to start um, with a short fun fact. Did you know that it takes a human being about 66 days to change a habit? But why am I telling you this now? Because there has been a couple of changes within the BRM and also within the organization behind. And it's always good to adapt quickly to changes. Today, we will help you in our webinar to adapt to those changes more quickly by giving you the info information that you need. I will first start off with a general introduction to Cascale and its set of tools and also the HIC BRM. At the beginning of this year, the SAC, the Sustainable Apparel Coalition, underwent a rebranding. The organization is now called Cascale. In order to make it easier for you to understand that rebranding, we would like to quickly explain. The brand name Cascale has a deeper meaning. The CAS, C-A-S, and Cascale is SAC reversed. So they're still the heritage of the SAC. CA, now the first two letters, refer to collective action. And scale, the end of the word cascale, references scaled ambitions. Now, what is important for you to know? Cascale is a global nonprofit alliance. The vision of Cascale still is the same. It's to inspire responsible businesses and a collaborative spirit. It's to catalyze impact at scale and give back more to planet and people than the member members take. But the question is, how that can the vision now be put into action? It's quite hands-on with the help of the HIC index, which is owned and also developed by Cascale. And we'll have a look at that now. The HIC index was developed to help organizations make systematic change. In the end, it covers three essential categories, brand and retail, facilities and product, uh, facilities and product. And those three categories are again supported by five tools. They help you to assess and measure the social and environmental performance of the complete value chain, and also the environmental impact of products. We'll have a look at them in a second. The tools help you to identify, to understand, and to measure different areas of improvement. As a company, when you use those tools, there's different important advantages. First, you will use a standardized tool. Second, you can identify hotspots. Third, you can improve your sustainability performance as you know where the levers are. And last but not least, you're enabled to engage with value change 
uh, chain partners. Because as I already said before, it's all about scale. Scaling systemic change across the whole industry of consumer goods only works with collaboration. The HIG tools include the HIG faci facility tools regarding your supply chain with the HIG facility environmental module and social and labor module. The HIG brand and retail tool to gain a deeper understanding of your own operations and the HIG product tools, including the material sustainability index, the MSI and the product module. They help you quantify the impacts of your materials and products. The tools go across different parts of the entire supply chain from T4, raw material extraction to tier three, raw material processing to tier two when it comes to material production, tier one, focusing on the finished product assembly, tier zero, your offices, retail distribution centers, and very important, also consumer use and end of life. The facility tools, meaning the environmental module and the social and labor module, focus on manufacturing of products and cover the first four tiers. Whereas the HIC product tools, the MSI and the product module, and the brand and retail module, also called BRM, look at the entire life of a product, including the own company operations. In today's webinar, we will focus on the BRM, the brand and retail module, which really offers you an excellent tool for self-assessment. So what are the benefits of the BRM for you as a company? Why should you go through the effort to do this? The future is all about data. No data, no business. And this is also crucial for sustainability. And with the BRM, you can collect all the relevant data, but not only that, you can assess your sustainability performance against the most relevant ESG issues in the industry, environmental, social, and governance issues. You will get to know where you need to prioritize and have your focus. The BRM helps you to compare your performance with your competitors. It gives you a standardized framework for reporting while respecting existing leading frameworks and regulations in order to reduce, I would call it, um, reporting fatigue. The BRM will also provide you with a clear, consistent and transparent scoring that gives you intern, your internal and external stakeholders credible information on all your sustainability actions. And it gives specific assessments for brands, retailers, and brands and retailers, as the needs will differ from one type of business model to the other. A sustainability work in its whole complexity is very agile and evolving all the time. Also, the HIG index adapts to evolving requirements. That said, I would like to hand over back to Karen now, who will introduce you to the latest updates of the HIG BRM and thus make the change of habits a bit easier for you. Thank you so much, uh, Stephanie. So now let's dive into the recent um, updates. BRM has more recently been updated to align as follows. The measurements are now aligned with environmental, social and governance issues. And this will be visible later when we go into the setup of the questions and get, show you the structure of the questions. It also increasingly aligns with industry frameworks, like for example, the textile exchanges material benchmark and the ZTHC brands to zero program. But there is also work going on to address potential gaps between the HIC BRM and the CSRD, the Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive of the European Union. Let me give you some more information about the connection between HIG-BRM and CSRD, and in particular also the, uh, the attached uh, standard, the ESRS, the European Sustainability Reporting Standards. The goal of Cascale for this year is to bridge gaps between the ESRS and HIG-BRM by mapping any inconsistencies with the ESRS and to support compliance with CSRD and to offer detailed guidance on how HIG-BRM can assist with reporting obligations under the CSRD. A technical paper will help give further insights on the alignment of HIG-BRM and CSRD and any implications for the sustainability reporting. And there will be a paper published very soon by Cascade covering this topic. And further work on aligning will also be done this year. So quite a lot of work going on on further fine-tuning and evolving the HIG-BRM. 
I also wish to cover the updates that were made to BRM with the BRM 2022, so one year ago, when actually quite a significant transition and change was made to the BRM. And some of the main changes were a streamlined assessment and the reduction of more than 50% in total number of questions. And then from value chain stage assessment to assessment by impact areas, ESG, environmental, social and governance. So previously, in the previous uh, version of the BRM, the entire questionnaire was structured along the value chain. And now we have the structure environment, social and governance. There are also new topics and some amended weighting on specific themes, also to reflect on industry evolution. For example, biodiversity is a new topic in there, which is certainly a, a topic that is on the rise. And then, although the structure is according to the impact areas ESG, it still assesses the entire value chain to provide a more comprehensive view of a company's sustainability journey. And we all know that in order to be successful with a sustainability strategy and program in your company, you do need to uh, apply the entire value chain approach and to make sure that your sustainability efforts, that they are implemented in the different business functions that you have in your company. So the value chain, we should not uh, look, uh, look away from that. It is a really important um, perspective on the entire sustainability uh, journey. With the BRM 2023, only minor updates were made since the focus was on maintaining consistency, allowing year to year tracking, and what I should say also, the BRM 2023 is, of course, the BRM that the brands and retailers are now completing, which and it covers then the calendar year of 2023, unless the company who is reporting has another financial year. And so you may decide to report according to your own financial year if that works better for you. And uh, then also, we were also focusing on, or Cascade was focusing on preparing for upcoming legislation, as I already mentioned with the CSRD, for example. And the changes that were made, they were mainly related to enhancing guidance and structure of the sales self-assessment for more clarity and access. So we saw last year, also during the verifications last year, that the guidance was quite short in comparison to previous years. And it was sometimes quite uh, quite a lot of freedom for uh, brands, retailers, and for the verifiers to, um, to make their own interpretations. And of course, that's not bad, but it also needs to make, uh, we need to have a clear guidance so that any person could do the verification, of course, as a trained BRM verifier and come up with the same results. So we need consistency in the results and therefore we also need a really good and well-structured guidance. So that guidance has now been improved. And then the um, evaluation of the framework for used users. So for instance, there, there has been a re-evaluation of the criticality of certain questions and this does not affect the overall scoring also in order to maintain a good comparability to last year. And there are also some more questions, for example, on the social pillar to reflect industry trends. And um, the uh, structural approach to connect with sustainability issues in the fashion industry. So you can see here now we have the ESG and the different impact areas. And we have also the due diligence steps. So each and every section and every impact area. So to explain, the questionnaire is really divided into the three pillars. And then every uh, pillar is divided again into the impact areas or subsections, like general for environment, biodiversity for environment, etc. And all of these subsections now, they will have questions uh, structured around risk assessment, policy and commitments, measurements and targets, implementation and results, communication and collaboration. And this is in order to make sure that there is like a consistency also in how the questions are asked and that we also cover everything that is important with the sustainability strategy or with an ESG uh, approach. 
So uh, that's an important um, area. And then there are also different questions. So every question has been uh, given a question criticality, and that can be either critical or it is a level one or a level two and level three. And when you have completed your BRM, you will see all questions where you can still improve also sorted into these um, into these different criticality levels in order for you to be able to prioritize. And um, then if we move forward, uh, how to understand uh, the question. So I want to give you some more information about the questions to type type. Typology. <laughs> the assessment has between 200 and 300 self-assessment questions, depending on which BRM path you have taken. So, um, and then there are also around 49 unscored data points. And this means that there are questions related, to, for example, to your greenhouse gas emissions, to water consumption, etc. And you can add these uh, this data information into the module as well. The questions, um, they only require a drop down answer selection. So there is no, there are no text boxes that you need to fill in. And then the questions are also sorted into closed questions with a yes or no, then a multiple choice. There are quite a lot of multiple choice questions where you should select from different options. And then as I already mentioned, there are also data questions. And furthermore, as you know, um, Cascale like the benchmark likes the benchmarking very much. So we always have that for the HIG FEM and for the BRM as well. And here is some updates about the benchmarking. The benchmarking, of course, provides you with a more holistic view of your of the company's sustainability performance because you can compare yourself with other um, with other brand results. And it offers brands and retailers also. Uh, a comparison analysis with, the, with their peers. It highlights trends and identify areas also for ongoing enhancement and improvements. And it provides a general overview and detailed data for each sustainability pillar. So you can, you can drill down into the benchmarking and get uh, a lot of different comparisons uh, for yourself. Now, what are the requirements? Well, the benchmarking is only available for uh, Cascale members. You need to be a member in order to have access to this benchmarking. But you don't need to be a Cascale member in order to complete the self-assessment and or to and to verify the BRM module. And the uh, benchmarking is included if you post your self-assessment by June 30th. So you need to post your module by then. Otherwise, it will not be part of the uh, part of the very uh, part of the benchmarking. Okay, so that was about the changes so far, and now I would like to give you some information also about the verification. So the verification is, of course, the second step after you have done your self-assessment, and the purpose of the verification is to uh, is to review your responses and assess if your responses were correct according to the guidance that we have. Uh, from the from for the BRM, so the verification is now available to all users. Last year there was only a pilot phase being done, but today any brand or retailer can verify their assessment, and the verified data provides trusted information on your sustainability performance. It gives through improved accuracy, a deeper performance inside and opportunities also for continuous improvements. And what we see during our verification projects that through the discussions we have about the questions and the responses and the evidence documentation, there is a deeper learning curve for, for the brands, getting a better understanding of the questions and the intent of the questions. And uh, we have conducted more than 70 BRM verifications over the past three years. And we have really seen how much the brands can improve also their performance uh, after the verification because they just get better insights. They understand the questions better and they can, per and they can then provide um, better responses and uh, prepare themselves for uh, the next year's assessment and start working already on that. And that, of course, um, gives me um, 
an idea or gives me an opportunity to speak also about the timing of the verification, the earlier you can do the verification, the more you can use the verification results to feed into your current program and improve your current program in this year so that you then, when you go into the self-assessment for the BRM 2024, also have improvements that you can show off with. And uh, so how should you prepare for the HIG BRM verification? Well, there are quite a lot of things to think about in order to be well prepared for the BRM verification to have a smooth process. And so let me talk a bit about that. First of all, it's important to note that the verification team on our side, we are independent. Everything we discuss is confidential and we adhere to our own code of conduct and of course also to the verifier code of professional conduct and to any rules that uh, are available from Cascale. And the process, so what, how much time does it take and what is the process exactly? And here I want to give you uh, some information about that. So first of all, we do have a booking form. We call it a booking form where you can give some information about your company and about your self-assessment so that we can customize the proposal and the project for you. And then um, once we have decided to work together, you would then uh, assign us as a verifying body on the Worldly platform. And after that, we review the self-assessment and the documentation, and together we develop a verification plan and an interview schedule. And of course, because the verification will take place via interviews, there are quite a lot of interviews uh, to uh, organize and to plan together so that we can go through all questions in the HIG BRM together um, or with your counterparts in the organization. So you may have people from your different business functions that should be part of those interviews. And then we verify the data uh, provided in the assessment and we make a final accuracy determination. Are your responses correct? Is there anything that needs to be changed? And so on. And then uh, you would have a look as a brand or retailer, you would then have a look at the information and we would then see if that fits for you. And I will, sh I will show you some information about the actual interviews as well, because you will see that it is a continuous dialogue that we have. And then at the end, you will finalize and post the verified report. And what, are, uh, what is the time scale? Yeah, you can see it takes uh, one week here, one week there, and then during the verification, of course, it may take a bit longer. And so all in all, it may take eight to 10 weeks, but it is also possible to do it in a shorter period of time. So for example, the verification can take place uh, during two days, let's say, or three days. We can do it off-site, virtual. Most of the time, we actually have virtual verifications, but it is also possible to have the verification taking place on-site at, um, at your location uh, or in another uh, external location, of course, as well. So uh, what are the different meetings that we will have? We usually have a planning meeting with the BRM verification project manager at the brand. Then we have a kickoff meeting where everyone who's involved with the verification will, in, will attend. And we talk about the planning, the interviews, how to prepare for the interviews, and uh, what uh, everyone needs to understand about the interviews and the, and the process of the interviews. And after that, we have those individual interviews with the people who have been involved with the response to the BRM. And these are mostly people from the different functions representing the value chain. And finally, we will have a closing meeting where we will present the results and the detailed list of questions and also improvement recommendations. And now who should be involved in the verification and probably even when you complete the self-assessment? On this slide, you can see some examples of the different departments that are usually represented. For example, for governance, we might have the legal department, we might have a representative from the senior management, and so on. So you can see there is usually quite a, a, a significant number of pe different people who are involved in the self-assessment and in the verification. Documentation. Documentation is crucial 
for uh, your self-assessment and for your verification. Because you are probably already aware that BRM requires quite a lot of evidence documentation. To nearly every question in the BRM, we would like to see proof documents. And this is according to the guidance that we have from Cascale. So there is the how to hit guidance and there will be a link a bit later on one of the next slides. Um, to the how to HIG. The how to HIG is the source for you to understand uh, how to respond to the questions, but also how, uh, how that question will be verified and which documentation that is needed. So it is important that you organize your documentation already when you fill out the self-assessment. That will really simplify your work. When you are completing, when you are responding to the self-assessment questions, please check which evidence document do I need for this particular question. We also suggest that you sort the documents according to the respective section and that you even, uh, that you even number the documents according to the question number. That will help immensely for you and but also for the verifier because then we have a clear view to every question. We know which documents are now available to review in order to, uh, in order to um, verify this particular question. And I know this might seem a bit tedious to do. There is quite some work to do that. But um, I'm really in favor of a structured approach, especially for, the, for verifications. And so I encourage you to, uh, to do this. And uh, my request to you is to keep the overview and to stay organized here. And one more thing I wanted to mention, and that is when you read, respond to the questions, please read the guidance online or in the how to HIG in order to understand what is required for a yes response to the question. So even on the Worldly platform, to most questions, there is um, additional information that you can find that gives you more information about that question. But it is not a complete guidance. So if you want to see the complete guidance to the questions, you do need to go to the how to HIG. All right. And uh, then the purpose of the interviews, it is to validate your statements in the self-assessment. So it's really, we will walk through question by question together and uh, discuss the questions. We will look at your evidence documents and then we will see, do you have everything that is needed for a response yes, or perhaps a partial yes, or whatever the response was that you, you have given. And so if we go through the process here, one of the reasons, of course, for these interviews is that we as Verify, that we learn more about your organization, that we learn more about your function, about your process, and that we can also understand the documentation. We always come very well prepared to the verifications. We have studied the questions or the responses that you have um, uh, inserted into the self-assessment. We have studied your available documentation. But as you know, it might be that we need some help from you to understand the questions. Uh, not to understand the question, sorry, but to understand your documentation and find our way uh, into your documentation. And then um, we will review the self-assessment together. So we will be showing our screen the way we do now in this webinar. And so you will be seeing the Wordly platform with the questions, your responses, and the verification results. From time to time, we will go to your documents. Um, and to have a look together into the document. So you will be seeing everything that we do also on the platform. And I think that is really important because of course you want to, you don't want to have surprises at the end of the verification where suddenly we tell you this and this question, we change that response there. No, no, we always show you and especially the questions where we change a response, we want to have you on board with doing that. And then, so we discuss the questions, any uncertainties. You will also, what is important is that you give from your knowledge about how you manage the process, that you are uh, willing to tell us about your function and how you work with this particular question. And then we will evaluate the accuracy of the responses. And if 
we do need to change anything in the responses, we will discuss that with you and explain it as well. And hopefully you will uh, also be on board uh, with that. And finally, there will also be possibilities to give feedback about improvement potential. So as you know, of course, we cannot consult you in another project and then uh, on the BRM, how to complete it and then have the same person doing the verification. That is, of course, not allowed. But during the verification, we are allowed to give you additional information to explain the questions more, to explain why we need this part of the do this documentation and so on. So there is always a possibility to have a good conversation also during the verification. And also one more thing that I think is really important for you also to know, and this is something that is very important for Cascale, and this is related to all the uh, different verifications that are taking place within the Cascale uh, programs. And that is that this is not an audit. It is not uh, something, an, an, an audit that generates a black or white response or an approved or not approved result. No, not at all. It is it should be a dialogue. Obviously, we will have verified results in the end, and it is the verifier's task to apply the BRM rules to your uh, self-assessment and to verify correctly, absolutely. But it is a dialogue. And that is important. So please don't feel shy <laughs> in the in the interviews. Um, we can we can always discuss um, any guidance and any additional questions that you may have. And then this is then a screenshot from from a typical uh, verification. Um, what it can look like. We do have an Excel table where we do follow up during the verification as well. Because online in the Wordly platform, it's very difficult to show the exact status of the questions. And if there is something that we need to follow up on, for example, then we do need to have a place where we can uh, add that and so that we don't have to go into the module all the time and, and have comments that are related to the actual verification mixed up with, so to say, internal conversational comments. And therefore, we usually now with the new BRM, we uh, make a download of all your responses, and then we add the, the guidance that you have given and the information that you have given about which evidence documents you have available and which other information you would like to make available. And very often the brand or retailer is actually prepares this and adds this, this into the Excel table as well. And you can also see here, we see here um, a column uh, and question status and um, there you can see is the question open or closed. And this is just a help for us when there is a follow up. Perhaps a document is missing and, and or someone we need to speak to someone else in order to clarify a question. And then we make those uh, comments here. You see the column L and S comments. And then if the question status then is open, you also see here a column with who are we interviewing? What is the date of the interview? And then any additional comments. So this is just a help for us, but also for the brand or retailer. Usually we have a shared drive where we work uh, together uh, into that shared drive. All right, and now I want to show you a report example. So this is how it can look like uh, in if you do a verification with us. We always prepare um, a PowerPoint presentation and uh, where uh, we have, and that is of course, that PowerPoint presentation is used for the closing meeting. And we go through the project scope and objectives, of course. We talk about the findings. We give general overview. We also give you specific findings depending on the different sections, the pillars and the subsections. And we will be listing also all the questions where you can still improve. And then, of course, if you have any questions, uh, we can discuss those questions. And then uh, we will also be talking about what are the exact next step regarding um, finally say, finalizing the verification and sending it over to you and have you finalize it in, from your side and posting uh, the module. And I also have one slide with some resources for you. And here, these are all resources that Cascale is uh, making available and you can click on those links once you get the presentation uh, a bit later and then you can find more information here.
And as I mentioned, especially the How to HIC uh, BRM guide is really a very, very helpful resource. So let's begin wrapping up. What is the added value of completing and verifying the BRM? Well, it is an integrating approach to measure ESG performance across the value chain. And this supports also internal alignment, engagement, and commitment. And you will see when you have different uh, team members joining also the interviews, this helps you in, um, in aligning the company around your sustainability strategy. And then risk assessment for better actionable data and insight into your own business operations along the entire value chain, identification of sustainability hotspots, critical issues and improvement opportunities. You will have a score calculated and you will also have data verification with increased accuracy. You will be able to share and communicate your results easily with external partners. You can do that via the Worldly platform, but you decide with whom you share. So only because you finalize and post your verified assessment, you will. Uh, it is not automatically shared with anyone. You decide with whom you share your verified module. And of course, also the same with your self-assessment. It also catalyzes sustainability education and provides guidance. It drives improvements over time through benchmarking of the environmental sustainability performance, and not only the environmental sustainability performance, of course, but also the social and the governance related uh, performance. And it also, as you heard at the beginning of this presentation, aligns more and more with industry-wide frameworks and global regulations. And this will always be, in my view, this will always be a work in progress because uh, you cannot expect that the BRM will always be exactly compatible with each and every different initiative or standard out there. There are so many different uh, initiatives and standards um, available. But as you saw, um, Cascale is investing quite a lot of efforts into prioritizing the most important standards and regulations that are, uh, that are important for the BRM development as well. And now uh, let me talk a bit about ourselves um, and then we will give you the opportunity to ask questions as well. So who would be your main partners on your BRM journey? Well, we have uh, quite a big team who is supporting us with the BRM. And I do want to point out three persons. So, uh, one is myself, and um, I am a BRM verifier and have conducted many of the BRM verifications that we have been doing over the past three years. And then we have Ramya Kandior. She's based in India. She's also our country director in India. She is also a BRM verifier. And we have Stephanie. You heard from her a bit earlier today. She is our sustainability director in the strategy team and is also based here in Germany uh, with me. And she is uh, working also as a BRM consultant, as a strategy consultant um, and as well. And now to the assurance um, certificate themselves. This is important for you to know. Leadership and sustainability, we are a licensed uh, AA1000 AS uh, pr uh, provider. So we have that uh, assurance to be able to give you also an assurance statement at the end of your project. And this is a mandatory step by Cascale that there is a certificate at the end and a certificate that is um, that has a credible organization behind it, like, for example, accountability and this uh, standard. We have uh, conducted a few other webinars earlier and here you can uh, go and listen to those webinars if you wish. For example, I was talking about the Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive. We had a webinar just uh, two weeks ago where we were talking about that directive and you can learn much more about that. We have also been doing a climate to impact webinar and we will having a, another one uh, in a few weeks from now. You will hear more about that at a later point in time. But uh, these are resources that we have. And if you go to, if you click here and you can go to our YouTube site as well, you will find a lot of a lot of uh, different presentations and webinars, also about the HIG FEM and about uh, many other topics. Um, so what are the key takeaways here? Well, um, the key takeaways are you can understand the HIG BRM changes. You can master and plan the verification process. 
You can verify your data for increased uh, accuracy. You can master also legislative alignments with the BRX, uh, BRM expectations. You can manage and understand most uh, impact areas and you can strategically improve your sustainability performance. You can also request a proposal for the BRM from us for your BRM verification by clicking one of the links uh, to the right here. We have two different options, how you can do that. Then I also wanted to talk a bit about uh, BRM. So linked to the CSRD and also the ESRS, the European um, uh, Sustainability Reporting Standard, is uh, the double materiality assessment. And this is something that is quite new and has been developed further and in a much more detailed manner via the CSRD, the Corporate Sustainability Reporting uh, Directive. And um, the double materiality is quite a complex assessment to do. We do such assessments. Um, we uh, usually have several projects uh, working on uh, different materiality assessment projects and strategy projects as well, reporting projects. And so if you are interested in uh, learning more about the materiality assessment and also at the same time being able to respond to some of the BRM questions, because there are risk assessment questions um, in the BRM, you can go and also uh, have a look at our booking form and ask for a proposal from us um, for, for that uh, risk assessment or materiality assessment. And now uh, here's one slide with an overview of our different services. So we have a really good range of different services, both strategic in nature and such that are focused more on the product or on the supply chain. And that was all before we now should turn to the question and answer session. So let me have a look if I can find any questions from you. And if you haven't sent any questions yet, you are welcome to do so. Any questions regarding the BRM from you? There is no question yet, nothing at all. This is your chance to ask your questions. Karen, there has one popped up now. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there's somebody asking whether there's a separate module for a retail shop. Yes, yes. Um, there is uh, there is no separate module for a retail shop. There is uh, the retailer module, so you can respond either to the brand module, the retailer module, or the brand and retail module. So you can do both as well. And for a retailer, if you go then to the retailer module, you will find some questions regarding your shops as well. So that it will be part of the retailer module. And then there was one more question. Can I print all this out? Well, you will receive the presentation uh, uh, in a few days, probably at the beginning of next week. And then, of course, you can print it out. Uh, for sure, you can do that. You're welcome to do that. Uh, one more question. How can I try the double materiality? Could you explain what you mean about the, it, it's a question about double materiality, about the methodology for double materiality. If you could, if you could explain your question a bit more. So leadership and sustainability, we have actually over the past uh, 20 years developed the methodology for the materiality assessment. And it has been evolving year by year. And most recently, we have uh, updated the methodology to, to completely be aligned with the CSRD requirements for the double materiality assessment. So there were some, some changes. Um, for example, the CSRD is looking at the intensity and scale 
uh, of uh, of impacts and this is something that uh, has been added and uh, but other than that we we actually our method was already quite aligned with what uh, CSRD is requesting for the double materiality. I guess the background of the question might also be how do BRM and double materiality align? Mm -hmm. Yes. So then there is in the BRM, there is um, there are two questions, one for environment and one for social. Uh, if the company has conducted a risk assessment for environment and a risk assessment for social. And so the double materiality assessment includes, it includes impacts, risks and opportunities in the assessment. And therefore a double materiality assessment would, uh, would fulfill the requirements of the BRM in the, for those two questions. Thanks. Okay, you are welcome. And if you are interested in learning a bit more about materiality assessment, you can go and listen to the webinar we held two weeks ago, where we also mentioned, uh, we, get, we gave some information about the materiality assessment. And of course, if you are interested in, in working with us on a materiality assessment, you can also complete that booking form that I mentioned uh, on a previous slide. Any other questions? I will give it one more minute. <laughs> There seems to be no more questions. So with that, I would like to thank you so much for joining this webinar. And uh, I hope that uh, it was informative as well, the webinar. And here on this slide, you can now see many of our team members. You can also see our contact details. And of course, as we already mentioned, you will receive both the recording and the presentation at the beginning of next week. And with that, I will end this webinar and say goodbye and thanks so much again. Thank you.